End of Nations will put you on the front lines of a persistent global war. This is massive online strategy gaming on an epic scale. Join one of two factions fighting to replace the tyrannical order of nations. Battle your adversaries by commanding dozens of unique air, armor, and infantry units on maps that support up to 56 players. Okay, we saw perhaps the biggest tank, in fact, the biggest tank I've ever seen anywhere, not even just within video games, and it's all down to these fine fellas. Can you sort of give us a bit of background about what the hell we just saw? You want to start or you want me to start? You just go ahead. Yeah. Um, what you guys just saw was uh, what we call a Panzer Hulk. It's a, uh, one of the big super units of the uh, Order of Nations, who's our big villain in the game. Um, it's massive scale. I mean, we have some big tanks that the players can play in the game. And uh, when you roll one of these things in next to it, it's just absolutely monstrous. In fact, one of its turrets, just one of its turrets that's attached to the tank, is very close in scale to the size of one of your biggest units that there is. So we've got, you know, like over 20 hardpoint we call them hard point emplacements that, are, that have different types of, of weaponry and defense generators and things like that. And so it, these things drive around the maps. They're slow, but they run over everything in their path, including their own units. If their own units happen to get caught in the way, like from an impulse or something like that, they get stuck there. They won't stop. They'll just roll right over their own guys, too. So they're massively huge. They're massively powerful. And uh, it takes a lot of players working cooperatively to take them out. I was just going to say, actually, because the emphasis of that is you have to play cooperatively if you've got any chance of tackling these guys. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And on the map we're showing today, full bore, part of it is to try to upgrade these factories that will jam some of their super weapons so they can't, he can't use his big orbital strike or his EMP pulse on you. So there's a lot of strategy going into trying to, trying to defeat something like that. Now, the last time I, in fact, talked to you was like, quite a while ago, and it was sort of very much like, here's End of Nations, we can't really talk about it per se. We'll let you know, we, we have that game plan, that, that road plan for the next like six months, 12 months. Where are you guys at now? Just so I know what to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so we just finished up our second closed beta weekend, and we've had alpha continuously going since the end of January. So every time we do a closed beta, we look at the feedback, uh, plan our next closed beta, so we're planning closed beta three, and then when we're happy with it, we're just gonna start open beta, which is coming pretty soon, but we don't have an exact date yet. Yeah, the team right now is back in Vegas right now, just hammering away uh, from the feedback of closed beta 2. So we're fixing up some bugs, doing some unit balancing, and adding some new features. And just um, that's the entire focus is to make closed beta 3 even more awesome. You guys have this on the show floor, correct? Yes. Yeah, we have it. We're on the show floor. We actually are connected to our alpha shard. So people on the show floor can play with our alpha players right now. Yeah, there's 20, 24 units out on the show floor, or 24 uh, play stations to play on, mm -hmm. as well as we have our um, Guardian um, power armor suit out there. It's a 16 foot tall a suit of power armor that people can actually go have their photo taken in it. You can climb up the ladder and get inside and have your photo taken in it. It's a real unit from the game. And with all that, PC rigs out there, you usually realize that's a massive fire risk. The amount of uh, energy that's chugging through these machines to get these games going, the heat must be incredible. Yeah, the, in fact, uh, um, when we were showing it last year, it was unbelievable how much heat those sy the systems were actually overheating. And overnight, we had to have our the IT team from Tryon come in and cut massive holes in the furniture and place giant house fans to blow. And it, it actually worked, but it took the guys all night because they had to go out and find these big fans like just like yeah. that you'd have in your home and, and cut them into the wood and have it run through. So we've learned a lot about the, uh, the power <laughs> needs over, over the years and stuff. And that's all thanks to the awesome guys at Tryon. I think this is one of the things that people don't realize is they come along to the shows, they see the big stands, it looks amazing, it's gorgeous. That's a lot of hard work. Yeah, I mean, we had a team here, I think a full week before to get everything set up and ready and then then we just fly in and do the easy part, but yeah, and it's a lot leave. of work. Yeah. You had a chance there to sort of big yourself up. That was very modest of you. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> but um, music as well. You oh, talking about the music. Yeah, talk Let the these fine ladies and gentlemen out there know about the music. All right, well, um, you know, Petroglyph, we go all the way back. Our roots go back into uh, Westwood Studios and, and uh, you know, with RTS games, Dune 2, Command & Conquer, Red Alert, and all those games, all the way into Petroglyph, you know, Star Wars Empire at War, Universe at War, and now End of Nations. And uh, Frank Lepaki is a worldwide sensation in the gamer community for the music that he's done in Command and & Conquer and Red Alert, and, and every game that Westwood ever made, every game that Petroglyph has ever made, Frank has just done incredible music. 
And in this game, you know, he is our audio director, and in this game, he has composed over three and a half hours of music for launch, and there'll be more music coming. And um, he actually went to Frankfurt and Prague and recorded with a symphony, the two symphonies. So he's got a full orchestral score in the game, as well as his, his signature rock and roll kind of meets techno style music. So if you love, you know, all the music from the, you know, the Command and Conquer games and that, that style, that kind of Hellmarch style of music, you're in for a huge treat. And I just talked to Frank before we're coming out here and I asked him, hey, what do you think of the soundtrack compared to your past work? And Frank honestly said, he goes, you know, this is the best music I've ever made in my career. So that's direct from Frank. That's fantastic to hear. Now, there's another question I've got to ask based on the demo we just saw. Pink tanks, pink battalions. What was the color coordination with? Well, that was Chris's choice. I, I like to play with leopard print, so I'm going to go over to Chris on this one. Chris, pink tanks, explain. Well, there, there's nothing better than to crush somebody with pink tanks. Yeah, I mean, that's really what worse. it comes down to. That's all it comes down to. But it, it sort of brings us into, the, the, again, the customization options the players will have with End of Nations. And you can sort of elaborate on that. Oh, yeah. So you can, you can customize your commander. So like it, we have four commander classes, and there's a tech tree that as you level up, you can completely customize your structures of what type of structures you play with, what type of units and vehicles you play with, your commander abilities, and your class specialization. So that lets you customize your commander. Then you have a full army of units that you can choose to pick into your companies that you bring into battle. Um, those are basically those units that you get that you have access to are based on what you've chosen in your tech tree. So you have those. And then you can individualize your, your companies through skins. And we have over 200 skins. We're showing a smaller subset here today, but you can paint stripes on your units. You can paint flames on your units. You know, you can paint them to look, you know, really, really cool. Or you can paint them pink and put kitty faces on them. You know, and we even have a bacon skin. Being that we're American and we're obsessed with bacon, we even have a bacon skin in the game. And we have, you know, flag, we have the German flag, and we have the American flag, a lot of skins. And then lastly, uh, down on the unit level, we have uh, mod slots. So every individual unit has multiple slots that you can put mods in that give them speed bonus bonuses, armor bonuses, power, uh, strength, speed, every, you know, just everything you'd want to do to like make your unit faster, more powerful, maybe it can see farther. And, it, and that lets you individually customize every unit in your army. And you get these through combat. So you unlock new mods, or you might get them as an epic drop, like from the Panzer Hulk. You might get some really cool technology off of that that you can apply to your units. So it's, it's all about customization. And you guys just sort of mentioned in the presentation as well about the RPS system that's mm -hmm. built in. Can we sort of talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, I have, all the units are based on a rock, paper, scissors balance. So certain units are really good against other units. Uh, and a lot of RTS games have done this, but what we're really doing is trying to make, make this accessible to everyone. So we're putting in a lot of user, user interface elements so people can actually see what's happening and be able to learn the units. Uh, and then beyond that, every unit has their own unique ability. So learning how to use the RPS as well as the unique unit abilities all goes to becoming a skilled player. Yeah, you can't, you can't pay to win. You definitely, the skilled players are, you know, are going are gonna to do their best, yeah. Guys, I think that's about all the time we have for us. So thank you very much indeed for joining us and look forward to playing it. Thank you so much. It was our, our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.